is most of them are not going to vote. But have a scenario like this, like in this space here, each and every one of us has got a potential to go and mobilize at least 100 people to vote. You know at least 100 people that can go and vote. Can we use the strategy to get people to go and vote? Imagine... Silver, Silver, let me come in a bit. I don't think uh, the issue is about us failing to get 100 people to vote. The issue is getting the 100 people to vote and still be rigged. So the, 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 the strategy is how do we protect not getting the voters because Ugandans can always come in huge numbers. But the point is their vote is stolen. Their voice is not heard. The regime, we, we saw what happened in 2021, you know. I mean, we saw what happened in the by-elections. An example in Kayunga, there's a lady called Nakwede. She won hands down. But you know, the, 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 the Mr. Mseven came and said, whether you like it or not, it's us who decide. And that's what happened. So it's not about rallying people to come and vote. How is their vote going to count and be protected? That's, I think that's what we want. Okay, so, so, so I agree with you. So now what's the proposed solution for the votes to be protected? The if you can answer that question. The first one is question, to respond then... now, to not wait until that so-called election time reaches. By responding now, it means putting strategies that can actually work today, now, uh, or if it's so late next week, so that um, we, first of all, kill their plans. As they plan for 2026, we are planning for today. We want to uproot their system. By 2026, even if we fail to uproot their system, we have a ground that is so tough to be manipulated. Because people, people vote. People have even reached an extent of saying protest voting. However, the safeguarding of the vote, make sure the Uganda Electoral Commission does not announce what Museven wants, uh, that we don't have control. How we respond back is what we have control. And usually, we do not respond as expected. You know, so the, for me, why, I'm, why I started this space is to encourage people and hear from people to not start discussing about 2026 when we have today, when we can do whatever we need to do today. Even if, even if it is in protest of the rigged election, we have already a, a rigged election and some of the people are still in prison, some are still abducted, some are, are missing, and we can still rise up today to, to the occasion. However, we, we, we continue creating excuses as if we are already part of that election that they are trying to, to, to rephrase. We are never part of the election. We never really vote, and our votes are put into action. Most of the time, we vote ceremonial to show the international world. Uganda is voting, but the results, what is declared, we all know where it's coming from, Naguru and these few, few centers. We might be talking about 2026 when some places already have 2026 results, like NBS. I, I always tell people that statement, and they laugh. Mujia Kuba Mwagera wano 2026, NBS here netaring results already as a 2026. You understand? So, guys, I think one of the old, uh, objective things we can do silver to in response of your question is to start now and avoid 2026 from bringing back the 2021 uh ruckus so uh the faster we take to act the better uh by the time we reach the next year of election if we have different people who we are fronting if the dictator is out of the race that gives us even a better environment to really do what free and fair election is we have a leader that we actually vote as the people of uganda now i don't want to reach in point to 26 when we is still in the race and we are calling that an election that is it. Okay, okay so, so my, my next question is going to be, what are the activities that you want to do now, right? And what do you think are the likely impact of those activities? So give us like five activities that you think can work now, because I think the call is now. The clarion call is that it has to be now. So now, what are the activities? So that when people leave spaces like this, they can go and talk to their friends, okay, you know what? This is what we want to do. You know, like, we need to send a message out there. Yeah. Um, Silver, let me come in a bit. I think one of the things we, wa we want to do right now is let's even say no to the Electoral Commission because it's not independent. We cannot go into a, 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 a match where we, the person who is the referee is elected by our competitor. So that's one thing, to, to say no to that Electoral Commission so that we have a fully independent one that where the head of state does not select, not even elect, select, the chairpersons of that commission. So we personally, how, how do you go in there, that election where the person, the independent commission itself, I mean, is playing to the gallery. So the first thing is to, we have to debunk it and, and, and even vote no confidence in it. Like we reject it, just like the Kenyans did. In order to have a, a fair playing field, right now is when we should say no to certain things. 
the Alakama is there, he's still elected, even if it wasn't him and someone else, as long as it's Museven still selecting those people, we shall say no to them because we do not trust them. So can we then say electoral commission is target number one or activity number one? So now what, what do we need to do to stop them? My, my brother, yes. if, if you allow me. But can you at least at least allow me to be the moderator of this? You cannot just unmute and start speaking. I will block all of you. <laughs> so guys, let's have some sort of organization, okay? So that we can have a, because now we've reached where we've done a lot of talking and this part is very sensitive because I love when we start on the, on the solution part. Mokisha, you dropped. I don't know if I really scared you that much that your network had to drop you as well. <laughs> yeah, um, some sort of uh, uh, saying no to the electoral commission. I'm actually writing this down. And someone also has suggested saying no to the electoral reforms. And I love what Silva is asking. So if we are to say no to the electoral commission, what can we do to assert our no's? I think that's where we are. I think I scared Mokisha and his network, and they both dropped. So I, uh, yeah, please come back. So Mochi Martin, uh, in your in your view, say we, we say we say no to electoral commission. How do we do that? What can we do? I think uh, one we we can start that campaign. If we are looking at the uh, the campaigns, we start the campaign today. We cannot go to uh, we cannot trust our vote to an electoral commission that is not independent. We can make a demand where we say we want an electoral commission where they, it's not the head of state, it's not even any, anyone in government that chooses them. They are chosen just like the Kenyans. People apply and then they go through public scrutiny, through a, a committee, not the, the person paying allegiance to a head of state. So the number one thing we target that electoral commission saying, if it's the one organizing it, we want one where we know they do not account to anybody. Not, they, they're not going to get phone calls from whatever wherever they are getting them from. The next day we see them taking pictures in state house. No, we want an independent one, strictly away from the armpits of the of the system. So that could be our number one demand: an independent institution that is free away from the armpits, whereby the chairperson is not even elect, selected by the president, not even the vice president. No. So we need to make that 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 demand. If it means to overhaul it, yes, but we are not going to go into an election whereby we know the person who is electing the the, the people in charge of that commission is the guy seated in the state house. So how do we really have that trust and think we will have a level, a, a leveled ground? Definitely no. So we should have that, make that demand. We want an independent one free from state house armpits and free from the regime armpits. We want one where people, they can even, we, we, we can even see their submissions like, and people like, yeah, we go with this one. Just like the Kenyans too. The Kenyans, even the police applies for a job. It's a job like they, they, it's just Ruto who's trying to change their things. But they 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 they, they, they do not pay allegiance to the to, to the president in terms of their job security. No, it's to the people of Kenya. So it's the same thing with the, with the electoral commission in Kenya. It's the same thing. We should make a demand here in Uganda. That is one way of setting that level ground. If we are to head there, and we need to do it now, but we cannot go to 2026 when the Awakama is the commission. Who, even if it wasn't the Awakama, but any other person, so long as it's the state selecting the person, so long as it's the system giving us the names. No, we want names selected by Ugandans. Someone goes through Akakungunta, that, I don't know how I can call Akakungunta, like that public scrutiny you get. And then, yes, this person, we know they're going to do their job in allegiance to the constitution, specifically to the people of Uganda, not to anybody. So that is the number one demand we should make for those elections, in case they will be there, uh, to avoid repeating the same scenarios. To know that independence of the electoral commission away from the seven armpits and away from anybody in, in state controlling it. It means all those officials, they have to be people that people have credibility in. They do not pay allegiance to anyone. It should be fully independent. We can even decide that the day that carrying out their 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 their, 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 their accounting, other, other 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 partners are there as well. You get? We can have the international partners to be there, but we need something that is independent, fully. No, 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 no. So that is me. That's my number one proposal. Thank you, Martin. Um, Silva, does Martin answer to your question or you still have another question? Or we go back to, we deserve better. So, so he answers the question for me now, if that's mission number one, I now want the activities, okay? Because I think that's the broader issue. Now. That's the most important thing. There's, there's one issue or this thing, this is not going to happen. Or you want to do these? I think that the question now is, how do we say no to the electoral commission? So let me just give you an example. I think I think you mentioned one of the activities that we need to do. I think, but are we gonna go march there every day 
to the Electoral Commission? What are we doing? What is, what is this thing that we're going to do to highlight or to bring the point home why we are saying we don't want Electoral Commission? How do you fight that battle? Uh, thank you so much, Silva. Um, we deserve better. You had something to say before we come back to find what activities we can do or how we can start on that because it's really important. Oh, yeah. uh, thank you, good girl. Uh, I don't know what uh, Moju Martin said. The demand for the electoral reforms whereby the, the electoral, electoral committee is, is not voted by Museven. But remember, IPOD in 20, 2019 and also 2014. They demanded, they also demanded, they demanded that the uh, Electoral Commission needs to be voted by the Judicial Service Commission and, uh, and, 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 the, and the committee also need to be voted publicly, vetted, vetted publicly. They submitted to, to, the, to, the, to the government, they submitted to parliament, but they did dallied around, they just pretended around, and that was it. But now what is the solution anyway? The solution is what we are doing. The solution apparently is we need to engage with civic education and protests you know because 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 now, because now uganda uganda apparently is on a deathbed they are they are in ICU. you know they don't listen anything they don't listen so long as something serves their interest you know they'll push it if it doesn't serve their interest they will just be in it so let's just look around for resources available we engage in civic education and protests we protest if the government wants to if they listen yes we tell them we don't want we want an independent electoral commission abcd but apparently the medicine that is available to treat this sick person in uganda who is on a deathbed who is in icu are protests thank you very much all right um <clears throat> We have someone called, is it uh, Oling? Yes, can you unmute and speak to, to, to us, please, Oling? Martin, you want Yes, hello. Who is this Oling person? Yes, please speak. Yes, how are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? Okay, so the way I say Ugandan politics, I look at it as an equation that we have to work with, with the things that are there that are constants. First of all, the money is going to always be a constant. The electoral commission is going to be a constant. Then some seven is also going to be a constant. But at the other end of the equation, what we want is a win. All these constants are there, but we have also what are called parameters. So the parameters that we can change. Uh, for example, in case uh, you're looking for seats, like member of, of parliament and all those kind of things, we can look for polling stations whereby we have like few candidates few, uh, let me say, few voters that we can manage to, okay, if we can front a candidate, then we finance a candidate, and we are very sure that that candidate will win in a place where there are like few polling uh, voters, let me say. So that is now the parameter of money. Then two, the electoral commission, we have to make sure that when votes are counted, people have to be there. Then for from seven is case, there are there is always going to be a constant. We have to first we have to learn how to just work around him, but he's always going to be there. So finding a way of saying that let us uh, advocate for this, let us do this and do that. I think those things may work, but may be a little bit difficult. So as we are working with Museveni, being there, and we are not threatening his 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 uh, like uh, leaving his uh, the office and all the seats and that. Let us be working on something else parallel. Knowing that he's there, but something else that is parallel is also working out. Yeah, that is my sub submission. Thank you. What is that parallel something you would suggest, or maybe give us a small hint for not giving uh, all the information to the people who may be having, you know, uh, bad intentions? What are those parallel uh, uh, events or activities? Of course, we know uh, some. However, a broader picture to just give us a highlight, you know. Go on, Oli. You know, you know. Most of us right now are in Kampala. We are having all these services and all those kind of things. But then most of the population in Uganda is in the villages. We, we do not have real contact with people that are living in the villages. You find someone lives in Kampala for a whole year without even going to the village. So if we have that 
con can I say a contact with those people so that we live you don't just come from Kampala go to the village like on, in the polling season then you expect them to vote for you if we can continue communicating with them I think that can help them. then also we can help them in other activities that you know someone to vote for you sometimes it's money but also sometimes it's also the relationship that you have with that person the people who who will vote for you no matter what so let us keep that contact with the people where we come from that is one of the things my co-host are you back you are dropped yeah i am here but in a minute um i uh, i don't know if you can hold like five minutes and so on then i come back uh, of course um guys yeah, thank you very much um for those of you who have been here sharing the space sharing your ideas supporting the conversations that uh, steer the, the fight against freedom uh, and, and the new Uganda, a country that we deserve. So we need to understand that we are, we are captives, we are captured, and therefore we should stop this nonsense of Happy Independence Day, celebrating independence. We have independence. Don't see it in a message. We have Happy Independence Day. Because honestly speaking, uh, what is that independence you're talking of? You know, when we have thieves who are stronger than the justice system, when we have thieves who, uh, when questioned, they run and hide behind the so-called fountain of honor. Museveni is a very, very big problem to Uganda and Ugandans. He's a threat to our future, to the kids' future, and we need to start fighting him with all that we got. We need to also start distancing ourselves from issues that have to do with uh, these shallow electoral reforms that they have been trying to always uh, cultivate within our minds. Kuanga, um, first of all, guys, I am not saying we don't need voting. We shall need voting. But we need a fair, established uh, electoral commission. We need uh, a judge, not a Winnie Doro. We need uh, the UPDF to stay out of the elections. So we need a lot of things to change before we can even start talking of elections. Because we don't vote. We just participate ceremonial. But voting includes you having a right to decide who leads, and then the person you vote for is announced at the end. But for us, we vote, and um, the next thing you know is your ballot papers are floating on the river uh, close to your home. I know people from Wazit Chitagwenda, Walwom Sajon or Wamidama. Is it bright Wamidama? There is a place he heads, and I was on TikTok. I had a, a person, a Ugandan person, saying uh, that for them, after voting, in, in a few hours of the day, when they are moving around, they find the ballot boxes floating on, on the rivers. Like, Oburuluwe, Turonze, Ngabana, Uganda, Babusura, Kuwanga, Boba, Ina, Orede, Namba, Zawe, Zebakoza, Zebakoze, Nebatari, Nga, they tally up everything. And then the next thing you see is NBS telling you, Museven is in the lead with 70%. The, the next one is in maybe 40. And then the, the, the end of the tally, you will see that Museven is in lead with, I don't know, 81%. This nonsense has been happening in Uganda and Rwanda. In Rwanda, it's actually worse because the president gets 90-something percent. But I will not uh, mingle in Rwanda's businesses because they have their own wars to fight. I will tell you, Uganda, we don't have elections. Elections that leave our people dead are not elections. So for you to come out and start endorsing, endorsing these uh, weird, crooked elections by making reforms, the so-called reforms, it makes you look stupid, it makes you a crook, it makes you an idiot, it makes you an imbecile, it makes you omufere, it makes you mpuga, it makes you matako. You understand me? Because you are endorsing something that we all agree it is violent, it is reckless, it is full of corruption, buying voters, and you're here coming, uh, MPZ, Banji to Basaleko, at the same time you're suggesting to retain new new, new um, people on board, or whatever Senate, or whatever Ani, or whatever the vote should be announced from this area. That is nonsense, my dear. Australia. That is nonsense. It is, it is to even stretch the taxpayers' money more. So I don't agree with any of these reforms, though we have to interrogate them. We have to educate our people who have been hoodwinked for over three decades. Yeah, we have to talk about it, but um, I will not lie to you. We, even if we fail to, 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 to stop the, uh, the law or we succeed, we do not have power to actually see the results we want to see during and after the elections. So as an independent Ugandan, as a leader, as a, an oppressed citizen, I don't want to, again, repeat the vicious cycle, the dirty rage of police and brutality from security agencies, Mbu, I'm going to vote, you know? I don't want to, 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 to discourage voters. But until that day of voting, I'm not going to be here telling you guys how we should vote, how we should protect your vote, na 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 No, because I believe even in a year, we can remove Museven. Removing Museven is like a goal, crossing the goal line, a goal. You have seen 
a goal. When the, when the ball crosses that goal line, it doesn't even take a second. You know, so reviewing seven, it is the same like that. Or Zuka Kumachani, but Gambo one. Omana Yamade Katia, in Atava Mulin. Over a guy, I said, and I want Maka to get in Abido. And Nitiguo, Avasari and Coco, Nemsari and Coco, Abakubi and Nemzira Nemuimba, say, Ancore, we shall not celebrate, neither shall we uh, enjoy, because we believe Museveni is valueless. Mzewange, Museveni doesn't hold any, any, any kind of value to begin celebrating his death. No, 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 no. I think also I don't want to discourage those celebrating his death, but we want Museveni to leave power. And if God willingly, he should live as early as yesterday. Binebia reforms Zamau and and nobody uh, and uh, Matthias Mpuga, they are not taking us anywhere as Ugandans. That is a, that is what I know for sure. Ebirala munanso mesa Um I want to bring in uh, Mugisha. Mugisha, you've been requesting for the mic dropping off. Sorry, um, guys. Also, I've been thinking for for the sake of time because I've, I've, I, I I opened this space abruptly. Uh, without really quibbles, uh, but um, I think at the top of the hour, uh, we shall close this space. I need to have a rest personally, and then I have other stuff I will need. Kuasaganya, Nayebi, Kuatakuchi, Umulama, Gunogwe, Tuliko, 9th October. 9th October, my dear friend, is not just coming and spend the day on space. You understand? We have things we are doing, and you have things you can do as well. We don't have to do the same stuff. You just have to understand that we are scoring in the same goal. We are all hitting the same enemy. Uh, in which way, over whichever way, please just know everyone is trying to do whatever they can to make sure that we communicate to the rest of the world to understand we are captured, we are not independent, and we want the so-called Museveni, who is a darling to the international community, to stop mistreating, killing uh, innocent Ugandans. Otherwise, we have to force him to stop because he will not stop alone. Mufuna, Paganda Wange, Yenda Kuda Ku speakers, Abagala microphone requesting. Otherwise, Western Uganda space today was abrupt, and I think every weekend. Before you go, first give us a question, but I know not a lot of people, but two occasions, then you will come back after 15 minutes. A Kishon Goro can come, 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 uh, eating greedily, front of Mogisha, take on the mic to Anga. No one enough front of Rakesh on Okay, I greet you, new Balam Siza Kumina Maripuno, on all your aspects and your and your respect. The issues may seem easy as we, we see with our bare eyes. The issues may seem to be like it will be to Ali Buzibuli war in any format that we may think. But the truth remains that if you are emotionally attached to your tribe, religion, or political leaning to the point that truth and justice become secondary considerations, your education is useless, your exposure is useless, if you cannot reason beyond petty sentiments, you are a liability to mankind. The reason why I've started with that statement, it, it, I believe it aligns very well with what we are discussing, Western Uganda speaks. First of all, uh, when I went off, uh, there was an issue that was on table that I wanted to, un, uh, to uh, enlighten, but unfortunately I wasn't, uh, I was going for some issues. But if you could allow me, I would love to inform you, uh, people of Ankole, that before, if you don't know yourself, then how can you stand to defend others when you yourself, you can't understand yourself? First of all, there's an issue that raised up. Uh, and the reason why it caught my attention is because it is one side that I come from, the Hororo or the Bahororo. And I want to give you a simple preamble of who those people are. The Hororo or the Bahororo are the Bantu speaking ethnicity, mainly residing in the north of the former Chigezi district in southern Uganda. In 1905, they were described by a British officer as a quiet, inoffensive people who owned cattle. They are made up of the Hima ethnic group and the, and the Iru ethnic group. They reside mainly in Rujumbura in southern western Uganda and are related to the Banyankole. Banyoro, Batoro, Songola, and Tutsi. People, peoples respectively, Rujumbura was ruled by the Beine Chirenzi sub-clan with Omuka Makarejesa as their last king. The Bahororo speak a dialect of Nkore Chiga, or Hororo. They are subdivided into clans. 
that are similar to those of the Ankole of the kingdom of Ankole. Unlike Ankole, which was ruled by the Hinda clan, Mpororo was led by the Washambo clan. The lands that constituted Mpororo were formerly part of the Chwezi Empire until its dissolution in the 16th century, before the middle of the 17th century. The area that became Mpororo, the land of the Hororo, was known as Ndorwa and formed the southern province of the kingdom of Busongora. During the reign of Queen Kitami Chwa Nyawera of Busongora, a fictive Randin prince named Kamari Murari sought asylum at the Queen's court. Murari, a claimant to the Randan throne, had been hosted by his brother Chigeri II, Nyamsherera, at that time. Randan Songora shared a common border, and Murari and his followers escaped into Busongora. Uh, when uh, when you, 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 you go to the decline of the Hororo, the state of Mpororo endured for approximately 125 years until 1775, when it fragmented into six independent states led by the six sons of Kahaya, Nsheni state under King Rukari, Rujumbra state under King Chirenzi, Igara state under King Mafunda, and I'm a descendant of uh, Mafunda. Kajara state under King Chihondwa, Mbwera state, and Ruchiga state, despite the, the dissolution. The inhabitants of the new states continued to primarily identify themselves as Wahororo, a tradition that per persists to this day. Mpororo kingdom retained greater renown than its successor states. In 1887, Henry Morton Stanley was denied passage through Mpororo. Stanley's assessment of the Wahororo was unfavorable. And he went ahead uh, to... Uh, and uh, when I go down, because I'm, I want to do it chap chap, the accounts of Stanley and the Arab slave traders tarnished the reputation of the Bahororo as well as the Banyarwanda and the Basongora. When Captain Frederick Lugard and others ventured to conquer Central Africa, they harbored fear of both Hororo and Songora community, and they, and they treated them harshly. In 1910, British colonial forces forcibly annexed all the states of Hororo and incorporated them into the neighboring kingdom of Nkore. Throughout its history, Nkore had only complied three provinces, namely the modern counties of Isinjiro, Nyabushozi, and Kashari. With the addition of old Mpororo, Nkore more than doubled in size. Nevertheless, main, many individuals still proudly identify themselves as Bahororo today, despite efforts to assimilate them into the Banyankore identity. So I wanted us to, uh, I wanted to enlighten that, and, uh, so that we can know very well, uh, some of us, you can call, you can say yourself, and you, I'm a but in, in detail, you're from Western Uganda, but I'm Hororo, by distance. Uh, that being uh, given that history a little bit, I will again tap on the issue of the election reforms. Uh, these people are trying to play a reverse psychology. They tested the waters by the four that were published in, uh, in, in, in a new vision, and they saw, as Suna can attest to this, uh, the, 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 the postings that came out today saying that the Minister of Justice is under fire because of the public, whether they are scrutinizing the issues of the election reforms. But they, and then comes in their hidden card, because we all knew that uh, Puga is their hidden card behind there. So now they have pulled out their hidden card to marinate their plan B. You go and visit very well point number three of the region or the tier parliament. The tier parliament, it is a formation of another parliament in form of a senate. So when we want to cut the parliament from the 500 to 140 something, and then create another similar parliament or senate, which will have the same budget or more than that, with the, with, the, with the head of it, with the fully furnished offices and taxes and whatever, it means it is a zero-zero game, but in favor of hundwicking Ugandans. And when we go to the mandate of telling Ugandans not to vote their president, they will marinate it. I will give you an example of America, uh, Clinton. Uh, was it Clinton and, uh, and, and, and Trump, the first election, where uh, that lady won the popular vote of people by over 80%, but Trump was declared president because the, electro the electorates from the Senate and other areas who are like 200 and someone, something, chose Trump to be the president. So by creating a second tier or a two tier parliament, it is more sophisticated in the way that people, a person says, it should be aligned with the, with the, with the, you know, the original districts. But we already have the, oh, the districts which are already entrenched. And there is no any way you can dissolve a district without a consensus of itself. The formation is easy, but the, the, the dissolution is, is, is strong and hard. So in that format, when they come to parliament, you know their games of the eyes have it, the nays have it. They will first call, they will, lay, they will call Puga, he will lay his, his stupid thing after laying it on the table. Then they will say, uh, another member will say, we want to, uh, to amend it because some things are not okay. Then they start amending, we are article one in the, in the amendment, who they discuss it, then they say, those in favor nay, uh, yeah, those in, in, not in favor say nay. 
and the eyes have it. After that, they will give you a package which is well edited to suit their, their, their thinking and, 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 and everything. You guys go and scrutinize very well point number three or, or point number two, that issue of the two-tier parliament. When you go on the readings of the Gusipe Mazini, the readings of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, of Prato, you know, you will understand what a two-tier parliament means and what it enshrines in, 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 in itself. You can't a country without provinces, without a structure from, from the ground that can call for such. Why would you think like that? And when you, any person tries to marinate a suite for you and you don't go in to think very deeply, what would be the impact of, of, of these issues? Because if you're not ready to trim the powers of Mr. President or Mr. Museveni, the powers that he has over the electoral commission, the appointment of commissioners, the appointment of the of the electoral commission, the everything, the military in control of everything, then it means you're doing nothing but rather you you're helping and creating a system that will favor that same dictator. So a person would not and should not lie to you that a mere already by no namu dabaji wamu kamula limunji. Only na kugamba ne that yuemu kasukali to tabule to ye. That would be a nothing. It would be a zero zero. It would be an upside down gurunkom. It would be I don't know how to state it in a very, in a very, in a very easiest manner of, of, of the issue. But the issue is, is well, they are trying to wrap their gift very well, but they have found Ugandans who are educated, Ugandans who are young and ready to see the thing. So me, I would only suggest one thing. Ugandans, you shouldn't allow, you shouldn't accept even these people to discuss anything concerning reforms when Mr. Museveni is still in power. Because it is nothing. What we are seeking for is the change in governance. Then we can, uh, we can clean our house. I'm sorry to bring it in this extent. So that we can clean our house and prepare very well. So, my dear brothers and sisters, Ugandans, we should be open-minded. We shouldn't, we shouldn't, we should analyze, see the issue. I'm very thankful, uh, bring back our people, spoke about the issue that we should, we should have started even yesterday. We shouldn't wait for anything to come and when we start speaking. We don't have anyone to fight for us. It is us to fight for ourselves. So, dear Ugandans, brothers and sisters who are on this platform, I want you to use your medura borongatas, use your skulls and the brain and the body and the everything to understand how these people are trying to create this system. In the negotiation, in the, in, they want to create a way, go to an extent of, of Kenya, whereby the president and the vice president and the deputy president are all in the ballot paper. And then you see uh, Ruto fighting Kenyatta and, and then Ruto coming in. That is a system of Kenya. It's a system whereby they have gone through a lot of revolutions so that they can revive their system. Reviving the system of politics is not like putting ice, caramel on ice cream. No, it is a system whereby these people you have seen different people from different walks of life taking up the mantle of, of being the president of Kenya. But in Uganda, we are still entrenched in a 40-year dictatorial regime, which needs to first go away. Then we come back and sit and rearrange our constitution, rearrange everything, and then move forward. I saw when a person asked one of the associates of Mr. Mpuga about why bringing the term limits are not the age limit, because right now already Museveni is above the age. If they bring the age limit to 75 back, it means he can't contest, contest in the next general election. That should open your eyes who these people are working for. Why not bring back two things at the go? Why do we have to move in pieces? Bring the age limit back to 75. That means Mr. Museveni will be ruled out of the election. But you are not bringing the, the, the issue that will hit this guy so much, you know. And you keeping the thing open so widely open. So we, we need to scrutinize point by, by point. Do, uh, you know, do, do more research on how things happen and how things are being acted upon. Because in political science, we have a saying that uh, even in law, they have the same, uh, the lawyers have the same thinking. You know, if you can read the history and how we have been governed and who are at the, at the axis, who are on, 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 on the, on the, on the perisys, on the, on the, on the opening, of, 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 of murdering the constitutional and everything of that nature, who are welding the power in Uganda, then you can understand that anything that you create and it passes, it will be in their favor. Unless they are out of power and we organize very well our, 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 our issues and then move forward. Nothing should overshadow the revolution that we are leading and we are moving forward with. We should think about this revolution more than not anything else. Because the revolution will lead to a new Uganda we want, a clean Uganda, a, con a Uganda with constitutionalism, a Uganda that speaks and people hear. We should engage ourselves more on how we can uplift, on how we can make the revolution work. Otherwise, 
we are still under the blankets, we are still thinking upside down, we are still in the trenches of agony, in the, stren- in the trenches of self-denial, in the trenches of individualism, in the trenches of self-importance, in the trenches of stupidness. We should wake up and understand these things as a moving wheel. When it is moving and it is on fire, how does it traverse from one point A to point Z? We should understand the, the things. We should analyze the, the things. We should inherit the, the things. Because the whole of Uganda is a moving tire which is on, on fire. And if we just keep quiet and watch it moving, it will burn and it will end when we can't even trace where it passed. And then the, re- the rebuilding, the, re- the, re- the re- development of our country will be in limbo. We still have time to understand, to analyze, and to make things work out in a better way that can work for all of us. With that ample submission, I believe we, we can go on and go on and speak. I call upon Ugandans, 9th of October, let it be a sparking and an alarm. These people listen to us. These people listen to these spaces. Their spies are always here. And if they are really nationalists, they should understand that their country is burning while they are enjoying peanuts. And they take back the message. We should intensify 9th of October. We have a few weeks to go. We should put on our shoes. Our stockings should be, you know, uh, well, well prepared so that we can march towards liberating our country, towards making these impugas know that Ugandans know you won't marinate, you won't marinate, you won't marinate sour things so that they can intake them and then you sit aside and laugh because you think you can come as the deputy president and then in the wrong run play them the, the, the Ruto Kenyatta games when Uganda is still in the 40-year entrenched dictatorship. We shouldn't allow politicians to use us as their pawns in getting their gifts and their salaries. As I conclude, I will again speak the same statement I said when I was starting my submission. If you are emotionally attached to your if you are emotionally attached to your tribe, religion, or political leaning, to the point that truth and justice become secondary considerations, your education is useless, your exposure is useless. You if you cannot reason beyond petty sentiments, you are a liability to mankind. Dr. Chuba Digo. Thank you very much. And I beg to lay my submission in that manner and it and that uh, juncture. Ugandans, wake up, wake up, stop lamenting, stop individualism, stop uh, petty, petty things, think beyond. And if you really want change, speak about how change can come, but not asking people who are here, what are you going to do? We will also ask you, what are you preparing to do? Because if you think Uganda is not going in the right direction, give us what you think can be done so that we can work as a team and liberate our country. Thank you very much. Okay, guys, been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Before I even proceed, I want to thank all of you for having spared a moment to speak and share uh, with us. So, so Ken Shwanta, Gura Kishon, Gura Ka, Bantu Bambara, Bantu Ba Futputu, Bantu Ba Kasese, Gundi Wujo, Kargutu, Nturuko, please understand that you are slaves in your own country. We need to rise up. We need to stop this nonsense of independence uh, until we are all independent. Okay? Kanshwanta Gurak, Kahur. This will be the last closing session of song. Probably till next weekend. It's been a pleasure, guys. Put it a vibe way. That is the vibe 9th October. Yeah.
Otherwise, guys, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for being here on a very short notice. And for sure, we shall be having more spaces. Uh, right now, I'm be going off as the host, but there will be definitely another space. And if I have an opportunity, I will join to speak. The thing is, consistency matters. Um, if you lower your expectations, you will go far. If you raise your expectations, you will crash before you even reach. It's very important, guys, to maintain your momentum. Let's keep the gas. Let's know that the person we are fighting has spent 38 uh, years in, in power. That means 38 years of misinformation, 38 years of poverty, 38 years of misappropriation of public funds, 38 years of capturing institutions, 38 years of misleading innocent young people, 38 years of state abduction and murders, 38 years of suffering that no one uh, deserves. So, guys, you know, the Adala Avantabatoro. Uh, I want to send you a special message to the people of Toro region, Kabarole, uh, Chenjojo. Please, we need to speak up. We need to act up. Um, there is no one who is going to give us the freedom, you know, in our homeland apart from ourselves. Um, I want to call upon all the people of Toro region to make sure that every interest of our spaces are ground. Um, bafune independent thinking. It's very important that we empower citizens with information to make final judgments by themselves, depending on what they hear or learn from each of us. Um, lastly, practice what you preach. Don't come here and uh, hype us. If you're not able to do something, start doing something. We must remove the dictator by all means necessary. We must stop hiding behind a few individuals like Robert Chagulani, uh, a few party structures like Noob and all that. Uh, we should be a big force. We are Ugandans before we are uh, national unity platform supporters. All right. We are Ugandans before we are Catholics. We are Ugandans before we are NRM supporters or FDC or JMA or for, I don't know. We are Ugandans before you're from Eastern region. We all have the same passport. We all hold the same identity cards with different names. So please don't think you're special and don't think you're valueless. Don't think you're useless. We are all equal. We are equal human beings. We deserve equal treatment. We deserve good in our country and if we are paid to speak out so it be we shall continue speaking out we shall never get tired of speaking out but at the moment i want to say we are doing a lot of actions than speaking this is why um you're seeing there is at least a bit of change of programs in the way ugandan spend their time but we are seeing everyone everywhere you go you'll find the same kind of conversations I'm very happy for those Ugandans who meet on TikTok and discuss on very important issues. I have met their very interesting conversations, and I encourage all of you who are here, if you have time, open a TikTok account. Take this information there. You could learn a lot from TikTok people because they are, there is a lot of information there, my dear people. Njagalo Kwebaza, my co-host, in a special way. Good girl, thank you for always coming through, even when not informed, and for playing your part because uh, I shouldn't be thanking you. However, um, I want to appreciate your time. I want to appreciate your efforts. No kunyamba kukunyankore because, eh, rather only busy. Uh, if you have a closing uh, remarks, I would, I would like to give you this um, microphone back to you. Since you are a lady, I want you to be the one to give us the final conclusive remarks. And our last speaker, Mugi, you gave us a good submission. Um, I hope uh, Ugandans have heard that. This space is recorded, comrades. Feel free to get out clips, get out a few videos, share it. And if you were not here when it was starting, you can go and revisit what and in this space and Ah, yeah, you're a good girl. I think I'm going to close the space uh, because my co-host uh, has done her part. Uh, I want to salute you all, comrade. Until next time, have a great weekend. Keep the fight on. Thank you very much. <laughs>